when I got up this morning, my plan was to do a workout, take a shower, and spend the rest of my day doing little Mendy things that I've been meaning to do for like six months. Then the hot water stopped working, I developed an intense craving for some ramen, and I learned that the Foundations Revealed contest has the theme of essentially costumes from books. And my brain went, hey Claire, reread Folk of the Air trilogy and actually build that Jude cosplay you've been thinking about for six months. And the, the logical part of me went, no, Claire, you don't really have time to do that. And then the rest of me went, what are you talking about? Broadway doesn't open until May. So let's design and build Jude. Oops. Believe it or not, this is not the first time I've ever decided I was going to build something for Jude. So let's, I'm going to work with um, the skirt that I started back in August because one I've already built it and want to do less work and two I definitely have fabric left over that my mom can send me that will make this a lot easier so there she is let's not forget her her little horns I'm going to give her some bangs, because that's the wig that I have. She has human ears. Boof. So, the skirt I have, high-waisted skirt, that kind of has a lot of layers to it. It's very floaty. Because it's fairyland. But for the neck, the top, the bodice, there's a lot of mention of Jude wearing doublets and uh in some of the raunchier scenes she mentions her legs getting tangled in her hose which makes me think that it implies elizabethan to me so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a kind of a doublet top the square neckline puff sleeves but i want to do Please ignore the body. I am not really an artist. Puff sleeves. But what I want is kind of like the little cage sleeve things. I don't know what those are really called. But who hasn't seen Snow White and the Huntsman? So I want them to kind of come in like this. And then there's puffy white shirt underneath. And then the rest of the sleeve is tight. And of course she's got night fell on her hip. That's a sword. <laughs> Jeez Louise. So I want it to come down flat like this kind of like stays. And then I ended up designing several other options for the bodice and went with none of them, but uh, in rereading the series, realized I needed to accommodate gloves uh, so I couldn't have full length sleeves. Um, I'm really happy with the end result, but it is not what I originally designed. The book describes the dress she wears to Dayan's coronation as having black trees silhouetted on it.
So the skirt is organza that I dyed blue from white that I plan to draw tree outlines on. I bought fabric markers for this back in August, but uh, if any of you have watched Rachel Maxey's and uh, Sostein's video on how fabric markers actually work on <laughs> fabric, uh, I might actually end up using Sharpie or just some acrylic paint. It also said, the book describes the dress as going from indigo to sky blue. So I want the top to be like velvet or brocade. And the shirt underneath is probably just going to be a linen or light cotton. And then this is kind of going to be like a pair of bodies or stays. That doesn't need to be there. Yeah? Probably with embroidery. And I ordered some like... It's jewelry that you wear on your human ears. And it comes down like this, and it makes your ears pointed, and it's like filigree. I'm still waiting for them to come in, but I'll probably add those because Jude wants to look like a fairy. She spends a lot of time talking about how much she wishes that she was fa she was fae and not human. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. I ended up taking a trip to the garment district to buy all new fabric. Um, my mom couldn't find the skirt that I made originally uh, and was worried about sending fabric and having it arrive too late for me to finish anything, uh, which did necessitate a little walk through a sadly very quiet Times Square. Okay, so I have all of the pattern pieces that I'm going to use and all of the fabric. Now I just have to actually start putting it together. So let's get started with cutting some of this stuff out. We're gonna start with the skirt because that's easiest. <laughs> and the sleeves are gonna go last because they are very fray-y and probably will be difficult. All right, let's get started. Cutting out the, the bottom skirt. Let's go. The bottom most layer of the skirt I decided to make separate from everything else so that I could just wear it as a floor length circle skirt all on its own um, without wearing the rest of the costume. One, I wear tons of skirts, and two, I don't like making things that only have one purpose. Um, it was the easiest part of the whole thing because it was just a floor length circle skirt and all I had to do was cut out the pieces, sew them together, throw on a waistband, and add a hem. And of course I painted it also, but we will get to that later.
because this is a bunch of skirts layered on top of each other, I had to do a little bit of uh, the dreaded math to figure out exactly how long each layer needed to be. In order to accomplish that without breaking my brain, I put the bottom skirt on my dress form and pinned the top of my measuring tape to the top of the skirt and then measured how long the next layer needed to be so that I could put that measurement on the fabric before I cut out the next layer of the skirt. As you can see, there then followed a bunch of schmooshing together of pattern pieces to get the kind of thing that I wanted. I took the like leafy skirt parts from a Simplicity Fairy costume that I bought years and years ago and stuck them to the skirt piece of that same pattern that didn't have a leafy fairy like him, and then just kind of pinned things and tried to visualize how it was going to work. I should have made a mock-up, but I was very concerned with time. Um, it was a lot of kind of flying by the seat of my pants, um, testing things out, it worked out fine, it just, you know, took a while and my brain went, ah, a lot. I talked to myself a lot during the construction of these skirt pieces.
for this middle layer, I needed a little bit extra. Um, I wanted to have two little spiky bits instead of just one, but I only had one little spiky bit pattern. Uh, so I took some printer paper and traced out a second little spiky bit and just pinned that to the other side. Um, they weren't exactly the same size, but they did they 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 did their job well enough. The topmost layer of the skirt was actually the easiest one to cut out because I didn't have to do any math. I didn't need to worry about adding two pattern pieces together or making sure that the spikes lined up in the right place. Uh, the only thing I had to do was add about four and a half inches to the top of the pattern just so it had the length I needed, which meant that all I had to do was pin the pattern to the fabric and then trace out a line with my tailor's chalk about five inches above the top of the pattern and cut it out and stitch it together. It was very much a relief because I did not have to do any math and we know that I hate math.
I ended up using a black acrylic paint to paint all of the trees onto all of the layers of the skirt. I did the same thing for every layer. Um, and by the end, I think I was pretty good at painting trees. Um, this actually wound up being a lot more fun than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be kind of tedious uh, because I want to like painting, but don't like it as much as I wish I did. My mom is an excellent painter, and I find myself um, a little bit less than mediocre. But I had a lot of fun painting these trees as much as they made my back and knees hurt. Uh, but I did the same thing on all of the skirt layers. I only filmed the one because this video is long enough as it is and you don't need to watch me spend four days painting trees onto four different skirts. I've completed the skirt bit. Well, it has to be stitched together and everything, but it is corset time. Uh, I have already made one mock-up just to make sure that I printed out the right pattern size. Uh, I did. It went fine. So I am going to make a second mock-up out of these sheets that my friend gave me. Um, two layers of this. bone that, use that as another mock-up, and then I will cut it out of the real fabric if I am happy with that. And then go from there. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. This is a pattern I bought on Etsy. It does not have seam allowance, so I am adding seam allowance, and I'm going to remember to do that. Mock-up number two is done, and I actually really think I like the fit of this. Um, I like the structure. It is, uh, I don't know if you can really see, but it is fully closed in the back, which is good because I don't want to deal with adding a modesty panel. I just don't feel like it. Uh, 
So my plan is to use this as the lining layer and then add a, like the real fabric over top. Maybe I want to take this in actually. You know what? I might end up taking a seam down the middle. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to take a seam down the middle. Otherwise, this might get just a little revealing. Yeah, I'm going to take a seam down the middle and call it good. I was a little nervous to actually cut out and sew together the corset from the actual fashion fabric because I bought the least amount of this and I was very nervous about mucking it up, but um, by the time I actually got to this step I had made this corset pattern um, like four times, so it actually went way more smoothly than I was expecting it to. And I don't think I actually had to worry. And here we see Jasper in his natural habitat, um, sitting on whatever I am working on because he is always in need of attention. You can see my lovely grow light in the background um, that is altering the color of all of the things in my house. And uh, it's time to paint some trees on Jude's bodice. So let's go. I do not have a palette. What I do have is a food tray from the Food and Wine Festival at Disney World.
I originally bought this fabric to make kind of like a cape off the back that I was hoping I could style to look a little bit like wings, but I experimented a lot of ways with the bodice to make it a little bit less um, revealing because it, it was very low cut on me and ultimately decided to do kind of a princess style thing on the top so I draped these little puffy off the shoulder sleeves um, with just the top lightest blue part of this totally stunning uh, ombre um, I think it's a poly silk organza. I could be wrong. It might also be chiffon, um, but it's a little heavier than a chiffon normally is. Uh, either way, that doesn't really matter. Um, I ended up draping this onto my dress form and then just kind of tacking it down into place before I attached it to the bodice itself. here you know okay so I think I need to let the sleeves out a little bit they're just a little bit tight to the shoulders but man I was gonna add like straps I like this a lot more so if I pin that there and then let these this one is fine this one is a little tight so this one has to go out a little bit Ooh. yeah this is good this is coming out way better than I thought it was going to we went we went through a little rocky patch a few days ago but I think this is looking real good Let's, let's stitch this on and fix the sleeve things. this came out um I'm obs I'm obsessed with the wig it's a little wonky but I I don't want to take this off like maybe quarantine's just really getting to me but I I just really like it and I'm really proud of myself because I spend a lot of my time watching and reading things and saying I'm gonna cosplay that and never actually getting around to making the thing but 
I did this. I finished it in like a timely fashion. Well, it took me like a month and a half, but like, uh, the design is different from my, how I pictured it, but I've been thinking about making this specific dress since like July and I am just, I'm really happy with it. I'm so proud of it. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it now that I have it, but I like normally when I finish a project, there's stuff that I think, oh, I would have done that differently. Oh, I would have got this instead of this. I would have changed this fabric or whatever, but I don't have that with this. I just want to wear it all the time and like be Jude because she's great and I love her and man I'm just really happy thank you guys so much for coming along this fun little journey with me uh, and I really hope to do a little bit more cosplay -y kind of stuff because this was crazy fun and getting dressed up and putting up a little backdrop in my living room and making my husband play photographer was super fun. So maybe I actually will get that Byleth cosplay done. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye, friends.